Hello Info person, this is Anton and today we're going to be diving into some mind-boggling discoveries from the realm of biology and specifically a discovery in regards to chromosomes. Something that's ridiculously small yet something that holds such an incredible amount of information because it's able to fold DNA in such a way that it becomes an incredibly condensed molecule. But specifically we're going to be discussing a discovery of a creature that seems to contain most chromosomes out of all animals we've ever seen. It seems to contain more than 450 of them inside each of its cells. And while we humans only have 46, this little guy seems to have us beat by a huge amount. And so let's talk about what this means, talk about some other organisms with incredible chromosomes, and talk about what this means for evolution of life. But if you've taken your biology class a long time ago, let's briefly talk about chromosomes in case you forgot. So what exactly is a chromosome? Here's by the way an actual image of chromosomes from a human male. Well think of it this way, your body is made out of trillions of cells and inside almost every one of these cells there is a nucleus. And if you look inside the nucleus you're going to find DNA, the instruction manual for building and operating you and me. But if you took all of the DNA from just a single human and then tried to stretch it out into one single string, it would actually be approximately 2 meters long. And that's so much difficult to fit into a cell. And so to solve this problem, nature came up with this ingenious packaging system. The DNA, which is super long, first gets wrapped around proteins called histones, which act like little spools so DNA can coil around them very tightly, which then creates a very compact bundle of DNA we call chromatin. And when a cell is ready to divide, the chromatin condenses even more, becoming ridiculously packed. And so it actually starts to look like a rod or often an X shape with these highly condensed structures even visible under a light microscope. And so here what we're actually looking at is a very large molecule of DNA. And well it's this that we call chromosome. They're basically organized packages of DNA that contain all of the genes for an organism. With the word chromosome just meaning colored body. And that's because they usually stain very strongly when using certain biological dyes, making these molecules very easily visible. But why do they even exist? And also why are they so important? Well, they seem to be essential for both stability and diversity. And their main purpose seems to be stability. So basically imagine trying to move a 2 meter long molecule without it getting tangled or ripped apart. And that would be kind of impossible. And because each cell during division requires a complete identical copy of the genetic instructions, by compacting DNA into these chromosomes, it makes it much easier for the cell to separate each copy accurately, with each bundle package then being delivered to a new daughter cell. And it's really when this process goes wrong that sometimes we get certain diseases. But this is of course essential for cell reproduction and for evolution, which is that second part, diversity. In sexually reproducing organisms like us, chromosomes play a crucial role in mixing and matching genetic information. Before reproductive cells such as sperm and egg are made, chromosomes from your mother and your father usually exchange small parts of themselves in a process referred to as recombination. And so this generally creates a new combination of genes which makes each of us kind of unique. And so here this ensures that each offspring are genetically unique and creates this genetic diversity that's vital for evolution and for adaptation. But we also know that the number of chromosomes differs from species to species. As a matter of fact, sometimes this number can be very surprising. Although here I guess it's important to kind of mention one thing. Here it's easy to assume that the more complex the organism, the more chromosomes they're going to have. But that's not always the case. We humans, for example, have 46 arranged in 23 pairs, and something like a fruit fly, which is much simpler, only has 8 chromosomes. But another animal that could be sitting next to you right now, a dog, actually has 78. A horse has 64, and some plants, like for example tobacco, also have 48. And though generally most bacteria usually just have one chromosome, here the number does not represent complexity of the organism or how evolved the organism is. Because the point is that the absolute number of chromosomes doesn't directly tell us about complexity and really more about how the genetic information is organized inside a cell. And that's because sometimes evolution causes chromosomes to fuse and sometimes it causes them to break apart. And the best example here are our cousins, chimps. Chimps also have 48 chromosomes like the tobacco plant, but humans have 46. And that's because two ancestral chromosomes eventually fuse to form human chromosome 2, the chromosome you see right there on the left. 
Within chimps, it's still two different chromosomes, referred to as 2A and 2B, which is of course one of the main reasons why we are considered to be two different species. And so all of this brings us to this new discovery and this new record-breaking animal. Here scientists finally confirmed that somewhat unassuming beautiful butterfly from the mountains of North Africa, and the butterfly usually referred to as Atlas Blue, or scientifically Polymatos Atlantica, officially holds the record for the highest number of chromosome pairs amongst all living animals. 229 pairs and somewhere between 448 and 452 chromosomes. And even for butterflies this is super weird. Most butterflies and most moths usually have 31 or 32 pairs. And so this is not just some kind of a slight increase, this is a massive unprecedented multiplication making this butterfly really stand out amongst all of the animal species. But here is a super important side note. There are some organisms out there that have even more chromosomes. For example, this somewhat unassuming plant, Ophioglossum reticulum. This has 720 chromosomes, which is almost twice as many. And some single-cell organisms, such as certain ciliated protozoa, can even have chromosomes numbered in thousands. But there is a slight difference here. First, for some of these very simple organisms, these are not true chromosomes, they're actually referred to as nanochromosomes. And for plants that have a lot of chromosomes, they're different from animals like us, because they tend to have more DNA sets. In other words, they don't have pairs, instead they usually have at least three sets of DNA, and sometimes even four or six copies. This is referred to as polyploidy. Here's sort of a visual example of what this looks like. And so the single cell organisms that reproduce very differently do sometimes contain more chromosomes, whereas plants that don't use sexual reproduction very often have a lot of chromosomes too. And that's because they tend to evolve in a very different way. But that's something we'll discuss in some of the future videos, so you know, subscribe and stuff. Anyway, when it comes to animals, this is definitely the record holder. Here there's only two sets of DNA, like in humans, but still a ridiculously high number of chromosomes. And it looks like, based on recent studies, it was possibly the result of previous butterfly chromosomes somehow falling apart, or being broken apart into many, many smaller ones that instead of 32 pairs, now became 229. Here's roughly what this would look like if you were to try to image this and try to use a microscope to look at the chromosomes. And so what exactly is this for, and what does it tell us about life on planet Earth? Well, one of the strange surprises in this case was that the non-sex chromosomes in this butterfly, referred to as autosomes, for some reason went through this very deep fragmentation. And this very likely happened super quick, in approximately 3 million years of evolution which is considered to be very quick in evolutionary terms. But it very likely started with just 24 chromosomes from some of the ancestral butterflies. And so here some kind of a splitting event eventually turned this into 229, with a lot of the splitting and these fractures occurring in areas of DNA that was wound much less tightly, essentially making the DNA break much easier. But the surprise from this study is that normally these unusual breaks and these very extreme reorganizations of DNA are considered to be kind of harmful, or even detrimental to organism survival. But in this case, Atlas Blue survived and thrived for millions of years, suggesting that sometimes these breaks and this fragmentation can increase resiliency and adaptability and can actually be beneficial and not detrimental. But even more surprisingly, the sex chromosomes of this butterfly resisted the fragmentation, suggesting that there might be specific evolutionary limits why certain chromosomes need to stay intact. So maybe breaking up sex chromosomes would just have too many negative consequences for reproduction. But this is not just a biological curiosity and not just something scientists learn for funsies, because this does have a lot of implications for medical fields. We know that in human cells, chromosome rearrangement and chromosome fragmentation very often causes major sicknesses. And so by understanding how this happened to this butterfly, and how I was able to survive this, and also by basically understanding why this happens, although my guess is that it's some kind of a virus, here it might help researchers find new ways to limit or stop various destructive processes inside human cells, especially in certain dangerous conditions. And so this is an important example in biology where studying these extreme life forms can inform us and can help us understand human health much better. So for example, there's something known as sperm DNA fragmentation, which is often a cause for male infertility. And here we know that the damage and the fragmentation seems to result from some kind of a oxidative stress or exposure to certain toxins. Likewise, DNA fragmentation has also been observed in various neurons and seems to have been linked to neurological disorders such as epilepsy, schizophrenia, 
and even Huntington's disease. And Huntington's disease is currently untreatable. And so these organisms and these extreme examples can maybe help us one day understand why this happens, how this happens, or how to even stop it. And all this could be coming from this beautiful blue butterfly. But until we discover something else about chromosomes in DNA, or until we discover it of some other strange animals, that's all I wanted to mention. You can find all of the links, including this study right here by Charlotte Wright and her team, in the description below. And on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more additional secret videos. Or you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.